what if we had only the axial skeleton the movement these movements or the other movements of from locomotion that is from moving from one place to the other place by the help of legs will not be possible because you know just freeze yourself in a way and just try to move the axial skeleton all you could do is rotate your neck like this and rest you can rotate the simple uh, main part of the vertebral column that is bending and uh, rest of the spine exercises that you could do but not the, those which are involved with the, the movement of limbs so it is the appendicular skeleton which plays an important role in movement as well so we are going to deal with that now what our appendicular skeleton comprises of we have listed over here it comprises of the four limbs four limbs which is uh, nothing but our arms we are talking about our arms so the four limbs are present in the appendicular skeleton then we have hind limbs which is the pair of legs that are present and then there are two girdles the pectoral girdle is the shoulder basically shoulder area that we have and the pelvic girdle is the hip area that we have okay the hip bone basically that we'll be talking out about so this is the part of appendicular skeleton one by one we are going to see uh, how many bones are present in each of these divisions and what is their role how they are located so in the case of four limbs each arm has 30 bones so we have 60 bones going in this regard 30 in one arm 30 in the other arm so is in the case of hind limbs 30 in each leg so 60 have been set up over here and uh, 60 and 60 120 now we are left with six bones so we know that the appendicular skeleton has 126 bones and six of them are girdles the pectoral girdles have this arrangement two bones towards each side of the girdle and the pelvic girdle has one plus one that is one bone in each half of the girdle so this is what we are going to study we are going to see what bones are present now in the case of four limbs when we talk about four limb we have 30 bones we are going to see one one limb and there are three bones in the arm part and 27 in the hand so we have three bones for arm the upper arm is having the bone which is longer than others that is known as humerus this humerus is not the one which we have for funny things this is h-u-m-e-r-u-s not the humerus one then upper arm is humerus then it articulates with the lower arm which has two bones that is lower arm is having radius and ulna the two bones out of these two this one is larger okay one thing you have to remember that because we are talking about the bones present over the in the lower arm part they are going to articulate with the hands so towards the thumb radius goes towards thumb it articulates or it is towards the bone which is present in your arm that is towards your thumb that would be radius you can write r over here for your learning purpose and u over here that is towards the small finger that is u and towards the thumb is radius this this way you can remember it that this part is radius and this is ulna these are the two bones then we have wrist wrist has carpals which are eight in number okay eight small bones are present over here those are known as carpals then after that we have metacarpals from wrist we come to this part and this part forms the palm so the palm part is made up of metacarpals and it has again five bones okay then we have digits or the fingers as we call it this particular part now as you can move from here and as your hand lines show these are the three parts of the bones these, these are individually three bones and in the case of thumb you find only two so our thumb has two bones and the fingers individually have three bones in each which are known as digits and these digits uh, this is not going to be fingers they are fingers and thumb and 
there we use them as digits and how many would be the digits they would be 14 in number okay two for thumb fingers they have 12 and thumb they have two bones so this is all about the forelimb the composition of the forelimb that is present and you need to remember that in the digits also you can write it on your hand that this one this digit happens to be proximal so you can write p over here this happens to be middle and this happens to be distal so the proximal digit I think you can see this P, M and D I have written over here. This is again proximal digit, then we have middle digit and then we have distal digit. In this way, we have the arrangement of bones in the forelimb. Now next what we are going to study is the hind limb. In case of hind limb, again there would be three long bones. Now the longest bone in your general knowledge, the general knowledge quizzes or your uh, early classes you have crammed it by heart that it is femur which is the longest bone, longest and heaviest bone in our body and that is the thigh bone, the other name for that is thigh bone. So the first is femur or the thigh bone. Then we have tibia and fibula okay after thigh bone there is there are two bones same as in the case as upper arm and lower arm the lower part of the leg will have two bones tibia and fibula out of tibia and fibula tibula tibia is larger and it takes the maximum weight of the body that is our body weight is uh, received by tibia so this tibia it is uh, it also articulates with femur in the articulation between femur and tibia is present and uh, tibia at the other end this this part covers the leg part basically the long part then we are going to ha have the tarsals metatarsals and the digits again and that is phalanges basically we have over there so the tibia and fibula they this tibia is going to articulate through talus bone of tarsals so next is like we had carpals over here, there in the four um, four limbs, we have tarsals which are seven in number. These tarsals they form the ankle of our feet. All right. Then we have five metatarsals and phalanges are or the digits and fingers that we call the phalanges have again the similar 14 digits now uh, what you have been what you can see over here is that this is one two three this is uh, adding seven tarsals they become 10 then we have uh, 29 what about one bone which is remaining that one bone is patella bone which is responsible for inferior articulation of femur at the thigh. So, patella, uh, not thigh, knee. So, patella bone is the kneecap basically. So, we have the kneecap where at the back side femur comes and articulates, femur that is the thigh bone. So, in this way we have 30 bones which are present in our hind limb. This uh, is the entire representation of the hind limb. Now we are going to take next is what we are going to take next is the girdles, the pectoral girdle and the pelvic girdle. Now when we talk about pectoral girdle, we are talking about our shoulder both towards dorsal and ventral end that means this part and the back part that part we have to discuss now the pectoral girdle has four bones in total what we are going to study how we are going to study pectoral girdle is we are going to see the half of the girdle not this part when we understand this it is entirely similar so we are going to study this the pectoral girdle has two bones this one the beauty bone or the collar bone that we have that is a long bone curved at two ends is known as 
clavicle and the larger shoulder blade that lies towards the back is known as scapula. This clavicle is the collarbone and the scapula is the shoulder bone. Now what you have to learn over here is the scapula is important bone. It is the triangular sort of process. Okay, This is how scapula looks like. You can touch and feel your shoulder. This is a long bo uh, large triangular bone which is uh, located towards our shoulder. Now over here there is a diagonal fissure type of thing which is present and there is a cavity sort of thing that is known as acromion. Now why I am talking about acromion is that at this side clavicle comes and joins. Okay, so clavicle comes and joins scapula at acromion. Apart from acromion, there is another cavity, important cavity like thing that is the glenoid cavity, which is present. This glenoid cavity is the site of articulation of the hind limbs with the shoulder blade. So what we have in the pectoral girdle is that there is a long bone with two curves known as clavicle or the collarbone. You can touch it and uh, feel over here and there is a shoulder bone that is present towards the back which is having a chromium for the articulation or the joining of clavicle to the shoulder blade and there is a glenoid cavity in which the articulation of limbs takes place. Now coming to the pelvic girdle. Pelvic girdle is a little bit confusing. Why it is confusing? Because we are going to listen to many names of the bones and yet we see or say that it is having two bones only and those bones have the name coxal bones. Okay, or the hip bones that we use in the simple terminology. Now, in case of pelvic girdle, there is a fusion of triangular bones which are arranged in the manner I am going to write. There are three bones, ilium, ischium, no, they are to be written in the order they are present from anterior to the posterior side, pubis and ischium. So, these three bones they are fused, they are fused in such a way that supposedly this is the ilium, this is the pubis and do, down towards there lies ischium, there is a arrangement. This part forms the coxal bone, coxal bone comes and join over here, hip bone, do not use coxal bone, you will use the term hip bone because we are going to represent sacral and coccyx over here. So this is what pelvic girdle normally looks like. What you have to remember is that there are three bones, ilium lying to the most anterior most part that is ilium, then there is pubis, then there is ischium and there is fusion of these bones and they form two hip bones in each half of the pelvic girdle. Now this pelvic girdle has an articulation or a joining that is present over here where the two bones they come and join towards the ventral side and that is known as pubic symphysis. Okay. Over here we have uh, like we had glenoid cavity for not over here, over here. Uh, like we had glenoid ca cavity for articulation of the hind limbs. We have acromion uh, acetabulum. that is present for articulation of the hind limbs into the pubic uh, region that is the pelvic girdle. This forms the pubic cage sort of thing and it is towards the back or towards the upper part there lies a fusion of these bones with the vertebral column that is coccygeal bone combines over here and entire pubic region is formed because of this pelvic 
girdle and this is responsible for providing the link between the hind limbs and the uh, axial skeleton. So we have this pelvic girdle which comprises of hip bone in each side, two hip bones are present. You have to remember the name of ilium, pubis and ischium and apart from that you have to remember the pubic symphysis which results as, a, uh, which is the result of joining between the two bones, how it joins to what part it joins to what part of a pendicular skeleton not the appendicular, the axial skeleton does this girdle joint, it joins to the sacral part as well as the cochegeal part which is fused and this is all about the pelvic girdle. So we get to know uh, about the appendicular skeleton, uh, not so detailed but a good uh, information regarding the limbs and the girdles which are present, what bones are going to be present, what uh, cavities are going to be present and this, this much knowledge is enough for understanding purpose. Now, Diagrammatically, we are going to see where, where and which part of the skeleton is relevant and how we have studied it. For your better knowledge, you can see a skeleton if possible in real, in your laboratory, school laboratory. You can find the skeleton and try to memorize the names of each bone. It would be easier for you to remember if you have a skeleton in front of you. Otherwise, you can learn it from the pictures. We are going to discuss that as well.